Alexa, turn on, give a like. Okay. Alexa, turn on, please subscribe. Okay. Alexa, turn over the TV. Okay. So you need an Alexa enabled device, a smart infrared remote, some infrared receivers, an Arduino board that you have laying around, and something to control it with, like a relay board or a servo motor. So you can use your Alexa or Google Home device to do this, or just your phone as a smart device for your voice input with either the Google Home app or the Alexa app free in the App Store. You're also going to need a smart remote. The module you see in the video is an older design, but I would advise using the newer version. This would be the Broadlink RM Mini because it's one of the best known and cheaper options i found. What makes this a smart remote is a connection with Wi-Fi and the Broadlink app you can use to set up all your devices. To control it with Alexa or Google Home, it is just enabling a skill in the Alexa or Google Home app. So this makes it all very easy to set up, which I will show you later. Just so you know, I added the written build guide and all the parts I used in the description of this video, so you can check that out later. So your home bug, I mean a home assistant, will send a signal to the Broadlink skill. The skill will trigger the Broadlink RM Mini to send out an infrared signal in all directions. The infrared receiver connected to your Arduino will pick the signal up and you can use it in your code to trigger all kind of things like turning on relays or turning on servos or something cool like that. You can have a lot of codes and voice commands so you can trigger different actions on different Arduinos. You also can use it of course to control your TV or AC or any device that is controlled with infrared. So an alternative to control one Arduino with Alexa would be using a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino or Wi-Fi module like the ESP8266. When searching for guides two years ago, it was not that simple to link an Alexa this way. And I also liked the extra to control my TV and AC with Alexa. So that's why I choose for this option. I also think it's a lot of easier to set up for beginners like me, but I'm planning using the ESP8266 chip in the future. So I will find out soon enough. I will link two videos describing how to set up this method using either the Alexa or Google Home app. So I'm planning to upgrade the cocktail maker I made previously to also be controlled with Alexa using this method. In my next video you will see a finished cocktail maker and demonstrating the portable aspect of it. If you don't want to miss that video or any future videos, please consider subscribing.